The former chairman of the defunct Pension Reform Task Team, Mr. Abdurashid Baina, has been granted bail in the sum of 1 billion naira by a federal high court sitting in Abuja with two sureties in like sum. In granting the bail, Justice O'Connor Bank ruled that both sureties must be serving Nigerian senators with no criminal cases before the court, who must also possess fully developed landed property in the Meitama or Asokoro district of Abuja. The sureties must also submit three years tax clearance certificates and must appear at all further court rulings with Mr. Mena, who must also deposit his international travel documents with the court. Besides um, residing in Abuja, the sureties are also required to file affidavits to show that they can pay the penance sum which the court must confirm according to the judge if any surety does not show up for ruling the court will be at liberty to revoke the bail and the defendant will be remanded accordingly in the meantime the federal high court in lagos has ordered the remand of suspected internet fraud star ismaila mustafa aka momfa in prison custody till November the 29th for hearing of his bail application. The suspect was today arraigned before Justice Mohammed Liman of the Federal High Court in Ikoi by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. The commission on November the 20th filed a 14-count charge bordering on money laundering and other related offences against the suspect. Monfa is alleged to have laundered the funds through a firm, Ismalob, Global Investments Limited, the second defendant in the suit between 2015 and 2018. We have listed our vital witnesses, officials of Central Bank of Nigeria, officials of SCUMO, the investigating officers, bank officials and others. And their, their evidence are going to be very vital to the case. So I, I want you to... Um, you know, come before my Lord and then hear it by yourself. Well, the matter is subjudice, so I'm not going to plead into it. But I can tell you that it is a pure anticlimax. Most of it are breach of regulatory provisions that the operator bureau they change without license, as against the impression they gave to the general public when he was arrested. And then the first and second charges allege um, laundering of 18 billion, which basically they say is a process of fraud without explaining who is complaining about which fraud. You see, a, a, a company that has been in operation as a bureau de change operator for years that he inherited from his father, uh, the entire transaction has been mopped up and then um, uh, put into account of money laundering. You see, it's not that hard. The matter is up to this. We are ready for trial and we are ready to prove his innocence. 24 hours after President Muhammad Buhari gave the marching orders to security operatives to fish out the killers of the PDP women leader in Kogi State, Mrs. Salomi Abu, the police command has announced the arrest of six suspects. According to the police spokesperson, DSP William Ayer, the suspects were arrested last Friday during a robbery operation at the Chadamu area of the state. The police are promising to make public the outcome of the investigation once it's concluded. The victim was burnt alive in her home last week in the aftermath of the Kogi State governorship elections crisis. Still in the quest for justice, President Muhammad Buhari is seeking the establishment of efficient structures for the proposed special crime courts to remove bottlenecks in prosecution of suspects. The president made the request to judges of superior courts at the five-day conference in the nation's capital, Abuja, President Buhari also wants the judiciary to initiate a study in adjudication of election matters and proffer advice accordingly. Our correspondent Ibrahim Adra now reports. The theme for this year's conference is... Judges of superior courts in the land take up every available space. Once in two years, they converge to reflect and re-strategize. Here, they are joined by representatives of the legislature and head of the executive arm. They aim to evaluate their performances and chart new courses. The conference also provides a platform for judges to strategize on the means of adopting global best practices to meet critical challenges in the dispensation of justice to all. The Chief Justice of Nigeria re-echoed areas of challenges and successes 
including financial autonomy for the judiciary. While it is true that the judiciary at the federal level enjoys full financial autonomy, the judiciary is in some states lack the necessary funding to achieve giant strides. President Muhammad Buhari delivered the keynote address and challenged the judiciary on special courts, justice sector reforms and more. I will advise that the company should in its deliberations consider how to create an efficient structure for the proposed special crime courts or the urgent designation of insisting of existing courts as special courts with competent and credible judicial officers in order to remove administrative bottlenecks in the judicial process. I will encourage the judiciary to undertake a critical review and assessment of their needs in terms of technology, competent administrative judicial personnel and welfare as well as skills required to make the Nigerian judiciary more innovative and in tune with modern judicial approaches. The conference is organized by the National Judicial Institute established in 1999. It is saddled with building capacity and other processes that lead to improved judicial services in the courts. In the next four days, these judges of Superior Court will be looking at various issues that they feel are critical to moving the judicial sector forward. Now, the president commended them for what he calls the timely completion of election matters. Now, he challenged them on instituting a study that will look at education of election matter and advise his office accordingly. From the National Judicial Institute in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. We're now being joined on the news at 10 by Mr. Leo Ekbeong, who is a legal practitioner, to provide some insight into uh, some of those questions that we see that uh, face us within the judiciary. Many thanks indeed for coming on the news at 10. First, let's start from some of the events of today, starting, of course, with uh, Mr. President, the President Muhammad Buhari's call for urgent reforms in the judiciary. Would you describe that as a timely call? Well, thank you for having me. Um, I would like to use this opportunity to commend Mr. President and also admit the fact that um, the call for effective and speedy dispensation of justice is timely, most especially at a critical time like this, when the nation is in dire need for competent judicial officers that would dispense justice without fear or favor. So the, the call by Mr. President is timely and in proper perspective, you, I would like to say that it's a step in the right direction. When we say administration of justice, obviously, uh, who's most crucial to ensuring that citizens get the full benefit? Would you say it's the judiciary or the executive? This is because, let me just paint the scenario out for you clearly. We've seen cases in recent past where the courts have made some pronouncements that are yet to be implemented. The case of uh, Shuare, for instance, against the DSS is a good one, and also that of Dasuki and the DSS. Well, from, from the perspective of uh, the doctrine of separation of powers, you will agree with me that the doctrine spells out the different roles of the various arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and of course the judiciary. And their duties are well defined in the Constitution. Section 6 of the 1999 Constitution as amended spells out the role and the duties of the judicial arm of government. In answering your question, the court being belonging to the judicial arm of government have a role to play and as well the executive arm of government as, as well as the legislature also have their own role to play the courts are responsible for dispensing justice 
And the constitution also makes it clear that decisions of court must be obeyed by all and sundry, both the governed and the government. So decisions of court is not selective. They must be obeyed irrespective of whoever is involved. What then would you say must be done in cases such as the ones I just mentioned? That those cases have uh, lingered on and probably in some of other cases, those court orders were not obeyed. Well, the rule of law is the cornerstone of every constitutional democracy. In the cases you've mentioned, it's unfortunate, but in, to be sincere, no organ of government, no individual, no personality has the right to disobey the order of court. The order of court is the decision of that institution and must be obeyed irrespective of whose ox is God. Are you fully confident that the judiciary is really independent now with the kinds of reforms that we're seeing? Well, to a large extent, I would say yes, because one of the cardinal objectives of a constitutional democracy is independence, the independence of the judiciary. And uh, this brings to mind the fact that there is a lot that requires or needs to be done in order to ensure that the judiciary itself is independent at where financial autonomy is there. The, and the entire gamut of the justice sector reform is important, repeals and review of obsolete and lax laws and enactment of effective laws that would be in tandem with current realities in our polity are still part of what would make up an effective, efficient, and independent judiciary. Mr. Leo Ekbayong, I want to thank you so much indeed for talking to us here on the News at 10, a legal practitioner he is indeed.